technology you know that's the theme of this program for the last two years on a street on a, on a real tear hitting a string of highs and those people on your screen right now they are the CEOs of the big name technology companies and boy have they enjoyed a surge in wealth look at that the fine print at the bottom of the page there 91 billion Bill Gates that's what he's worth and look wow. at Jeff Bezos Amazon guy, $88 billion. He's on the verge of becoming the wealthiest person on the planet, unseating Bill Gates, who's been there forever. Gene Munster is with us, managing partner at Loop Ventures. Right, Gene, that screen that we just saw, that to me is testament to the success, power, and wealth of the big five technology companies. And it makes me think that sooner or later, the politicians are going to come to get them. What say you? <laughs> I think, yeah, they can come and get them, but it's not going to change that these are going to continue to be some of the most profitable businesses. I think if you're someone who's in school who's looking to make a ton of money, I think you've got to go to the tech market. Three of the top yeah. five most wealthy people in the world are tech-related. So It's not like the dot-com bubble of the 1990s. A lot of people say that to me. Oh, I was invested in the 1990s, lost my shirt. Why shouldn't I sell the big five now because they've gone straight up? It's a different situation, though, isn't it? It is, and I think the difference here is that these companies, now Bill Gates is going to get surpassed by Jeff Bezos, and the reason is that they are aggressively disrupting what's happening not only in e-commerce and commerce in general, but they're going to go after content. And so I think that the difference here between what was happening in the dot-com bubble is that those were just really imagination type of stories where we have real practical changes in our lives today. Okay, now you're the technology guru. And we use you as such on this program. I hope that's okay with you. Great. Right? You've got to tell me about Lyft. It's the latest company to get into self-driving cars. It joins Uber, Waymo, and other tech companies. So my question is, when I think of an automobile company, I no longer think of General Motors, Ford, Chrysler, Toyota, BMW. I think of Apple, Google, Tesla, Microsoft, big tech. Am I going wrong somewhere? You're spot on, but you're still in the, the small majority of people who view it that way. Really? And at the end of the day is that there's going to be a paradigm shift, another one in terms of what's going to happen in cars. When you see a car today, think of a horse and buggy. And in the next few years, we're going to start to have autonomy, which will radically change this. And just really? separately, this Lyft announcement today is a huge announcement. And the reason is that it really... But I, I, just, I just don't feel that the public's on board with this. Are we really going to be getting into a little bubble and being driven around by a computer. Are we going to be happy with that five years from now? Yeah, well, I think we're we going to are. be delighted for it because we won't have to think of it. Don't we're you enjoy to... driving? You know, you'll have, drivers will have a chance to go to a track, just like people who own horses can go to a track and enjoy horseback riding. And so uh, to answer your question is that uh, majority of people actually don't enjoy driving. They would rather be driven around. <laughs> okay. I guess I'm in a minority then. I mean... Uh, <laughs> Especially just, millennials, don't they don't even like car them. ownership. They don't like car brands. And so I would keep a close eye here on Tesla. They're going to really cut the oxygen off of Uber and Lyft over time. Why? Uh, because Uber and Lyft, uh, to be a ride-sharing service, it's top of the funnel, gaining users, is going to become increasingly more competitive once autonomy cars are out there. Consumers will be able to give their car to a fleet. So when you're at work, you can actually turn your car over to a fleet. That's why uh, Lyft wants to have their own self-driving cars, is they're going to be displaced by companies like Tesla. Quickly, Snap, working to protect its software from Facebook. Let me, before we get back to you, Ash, what's going on with that story? I don't understand this. Well, the problem is that Snap has realized that everything it's trying to do is being copied by Facebook. So you have, like, Stories was copied by Facebook. Uh, unique Lenses, you remember you put bunny ears on your head and all that with Snap. Uh, Facebook has a similar thing, and then Snap went with original content. Facebook already does that. They're worried that, so what they're doing is buying engineers who can come up with cyber security code that cannot be ripped off by Facebook. At least that's the story. However, to me, if Snap comes out with something, I think Facebook has the power and the resources without yeah. having to steal the code to come up with something very similar. Mm. Facebook's going to win this one? <laughs> yeah. A nod yeah. of the head. Yeah, 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 yeah. They win. Snaps. They have four times as many users. They can cross-sell right. their products into that, and they can copy these, even with this greater protection that Snapchat's getting. 
uh, I think it's going to be a tough road for Snap. Yeah. You see, it's like Amazon, predatory pricing, Facebook, unfair competition. I mean, you know, I can see the, the oh. building a case against yeah. them on that. The way yeah. Zuckerberg says is when you reach a billion people on scale, there's particular advantages. He doesn't elaborate on that, but this is an example. <laughs> <laughs> Monster, you're all right. Thanks, Gene. Thank Thanks you. for being with us, sir. Appreciate it. All right.